Good morning students. Welcome to the second session of inverse trigonometric functions. In the first session we have done problems based on the principal branch range of inverse trigonometric functions. Let us recall once again uh, that we have six trigonometric inverse trigonometric functions sin inverse with its principal branch range as minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 cos inverse 0 to pi tan inverse minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 cosec inverse minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 excluding 0 sec inverse 0 to pi excluding pi by 2 and cot inverse 0 to pi Students, these are the principal branch ranges of inverse trigonometric functions. Now, there is a very important question like uh, what is the range of sine inverse other than the principal branch range? Then you can answer pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2. In the similar fashion, if the question is asked, what is the range of cos inverse other than the principal branch range, then your answer should be pi to 2 pi or 2 pi to 3 pi and so on. Now we have some important properties of inverse trigonometric function. You can see the first property sine inverse sine x it is equals to x when x belongs to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Here this condition x belongs to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 is very important. If your x belongs in this interval then only we can say sine inverse of sine x it is equals to x. Now let's take example first sine inverse sine pi by 4. We know the value of sine pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. So in the second step we will get sine inverse 1 by root 2. Now as we have done the questions in first exercise sine inverse 1 by root 2 we have to think in a way that at what angle the value of sine is 1 by root 2. So we will get the answer pi by 4. So from here we can conclude since pi by 4 belongs to the interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 therefore we can write this result directly sine inverse of sine pi by 4 it is equals to pi by 4. Let's take another example, sine inverse, sine 3 pi by 4, this is my question. Here the angle is 3 pi by 4. Now, as we know, 3 pi by 4 does not belong to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Therefore, sine inverse, sine 3 pi by 4, it is not equals to 3 pi by 4. Here we have to use trigonometric identity sin of pi minus theta it is equals to sin theta. This you have done in class 11th trigonometry. As we know pi minus theta lies in the second quadrant that is the reason sin of pi minus theta it is equals to sin theta. So we will write sin 3 pi by 4 as sin pi minus pi by 4. So using the identity, it becomes sine pi by 4. Now we substitute this value back in the question. We will have sine inverse sine 3 pi by 4. It is equals to sine inverse sine pi by 4. Now you, this angle pi by 4 lies in the principal branch range of sine inverse. Therefore my answer will came out to be pi by 4. The same result is valid for others inverse trigonometric ratios also. 
but subject to the condition my x must belongs to the principal branch range of these inverse trigonometric functions we can see cos inverse cos x it is equals to x but x must lie in 0 to pi tan inverse of tan x it is also equals to x but here also x must belongs to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 similarly we can have the results sine of sine inverse x it is also equals to x but my x belongs to minus 1 to 1 now with the help of these identities you can solve question number 16 17 and 19 of exercise 2.2 and question number 1 and 2 of miscellaneous exercise now uh, we know a formula sin 2x is equals to 2 sin x cos x and sin 3x is equals to 3 sin x minus 4 sin cube x. These are some identities of trigonometry that we have done in class 11. Now let's take an example where we can use these identities and simplify a problem of inverse trigonometric function. Sine inverse 2x square root 1 minus x square it is equals to 2 sine inverse x. This is what I am going to prove. So here if I will see the left hand side it has sine inverse and inside the bracket I have 2x square root of 1 minus x square. So I will remind the identity sine inverse sine x it is equals to x. That means I have to think in a way that inside the bracket I have to form some formula of sine only. Now in sine I have the two results one is sine 2x which is 2 sine x cos x and one is 3 sine 3x which is 3 sine x minus 4 sine cube x. So if I look at the formation of the part inside the bracket then I came to know that it can become this formula sin 2x is equals to 2 sin x cos x. So I will give the substitution x is equals to sin theta. So from here my left hand side will become sin inverse 2 sin theta square root 1 minus sin square theta. So my 1 minus sin square theta it is equals to square cos square theta inside the square root and then root will cancel by square so it will become 2 sin theta cos theta which is equals to sin 2 theta. Now sin inverse sin 2 theta it is equals to 2 theta and then substituting the value of theta which is equals to sin inverse x I'll get 2 sin inverse x which is the right hand side of the given question. So in this way there are many problems which I can solve using the identities sin inverse sin x is equals to x cos inverse cos x is equals to x. So here we have another question prove that sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is equals to pi by 2. Now in this question I have taken sin inverse x is equals to y or I can take cos inverse x equals to y. This is my own choice means there is no hard and fast rule that which one we have to suppose. Now if I will shift this sin inverse on the right hand side it will become sin y is equals to x. Now I will write this sin y in terms of cos. So as I know that cos 90 minus theta it is equals to sin theta so I will write sin y as cos pi by 2 minus y. So my result will change to cos pi by 2 minus y is equals to x. Now the question arises why I have written it in terms of cos because 
I have cos inverse as the other term in my question. Now if I shift this cos on the right hand side, this equation will change to pi by 2 minus y is equals to cos inverse x. Now I'll substitute the value of y. So I'll get pi by 2 is equals to sin inverse x plus cos inverse x. Uh, then you have to write this 10y in terms of cot. So cot pi by 2 minus x it is equals to 10x. So using this you can simplify the first identity and in the second identity you have to use sec pi by 2 minus x is equals to cos x. So try these uh, both the identities and if you find any problem you can contact me. Next we have another identity and it is a very important identity of inverse trigonometric function. It gives us 10 inverse x plus 10 inverse y it is equals to 10 inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy. Here x into y it must be less than 1. Why this condition is there and what is the way to remember this condition x into y less than 1? Just look at the right hand side part of the uh, identity. It contains 10 inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy. Now since in the denominator you have 1 minus xy, that is the reason they are saying that this xy should be less than 1. If it is greater than 1, then this whole part inside the bracket it will be negative and there will be another situation. So we are not going to discuss that but we have to keep in mind that we can apply this formula or identity only in the case where x into y is less than 1. Now let's try to prove this identity. We have taken 10 inverse x is equals to capital X and 10 inverse y is equals to capital Y. So my left hand side will become x plus y. Now this is a very important point I am telling you and there will be few of the questions in the exercise as well as in the miscellaneous exercise that I will be asking you to solve with the help of this technique only. The two terms on the left hand side I have considered them as capital X and capital Y. Now on the right hand side I have 10 inverse. So what I will do, I will try to find the value of 10 x plus y. You can uh, commit it to your memory that why I have taken 10 over here. Reason being on the right hand side I have 10 inverse. Fine. Now 10 x plus y has the formula 10 x plus 10 y upon 1 minus 10 x 10 y. Now in the next step I have substituted the value of capital X and capital Y. So my formula will become 10 X plus Y is equals to 10 10 inverse X plus 10 10 inverse Y upon 1 minus 10 10 inverse X 10 10 inverse Y. It gives me 10 X plus Y is equals to x plus y upon 1 minus xy. I hope you have understood 10 of 10 inverse x it is equals to x and 10 of 10 inverse y it is equals to y. So in the next step what I have done I have shifted this 10 on the right hand side so that it will become 10 inverse. So x plus y it leads to 10 inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy. Now I will substitute the value of capital X and capital Y and I will get my identity 10 inverse x plus 10 inverse y it is equals to 10 inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy. In the same way you can prove this identity also 10 inverse x 
minus 10 inverse y it is equals to 10 inverse x minus y upon 1 plus x y. Here again I have a condition that my x into y it is greater than minus 1. You can go through the steps. I have again considered 10 inverse small x it is equals to capital X and 10 inverse y it is equals to capital Y. Now my left hand side will become x minus y. Since on the right hand side I have 10 inverse so I will find the value of 10x minus y. And the formula for 10x minus y is 10x minus 10y upon 1 plus 10x 10y. After this I have 10x minus y is equals to 10 10 inverse x minus 10 10 inverse y upon 1 plus 10 10 inverse x 10 10 inverse y. So what I have done over here I have just substituted the value of capital X and capital Y. So this will become 10x minus y it is equals to x minus y upon 1 plus xy. So from here I can conclude x minus y it is equals to 10 inverse x minus y upon 1 plus xy. So I will substitute the value of capital X and capital Y. I will get 10 inverse x minus 10 inverse y it is equals to 10 inverse x minus y upon 1 plus xy. Now you must have done this identity also in class 11th. Sine 2 theta. It is equals to 2 10 theta upon 1 plus 10 square theta. Students remember that the identities of class 11 they are very important for this particular chapter. Now I am going to prove one more result in which I will be using this identity. What my form uh, identity is, I have to prove 2 10 inverse x is equals to sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square. So here I will start with the right hand side sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square. Since I see that uh, on the right hand side I have sin inverse so inside this I should have some formula of sin only so that I can use the result sin inverse sin theta it is equals to theta. So I will substitute x is equals to 10 theta then I will get sin inverse 2 10 theta upon 1 plus 10 square theta. Keep it in mind you have to identify these sort of results. Like in the right hand side I have sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square. So I have to see it is 2x upon 1 plus x square. Here I can substitute 10 theta in place of x so that I will get sin inverse sin 2 theta. Now sin inverse sin 2 theta it is equals to your 2 theta. Now I will substitute the value of theta which is equals to 10 inverse x. So I will get 2 10 inverse x. So I will have this result 2 10 inverse x is equals to sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square. So students, uh, these are some properties that we have discussed in the, uh, during our first session only. Sin inverse 1 by x is equals to cosec inverse x. Cos inverse 1 by x is equals to sec inverse x. 10 inverse 1 by x is equals to cot inverse x. This I have told you that we have two different categories of inverse trigonometric function. One which belongs to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and the other one which belongs to 0 to pi. So sin inverse of minus x is minus sin inverse x. 10 inverse of minus x is minus 10 inverse x. 
cosec inverse of minus x is equals to minus cosec inverse x and cos inverse minus x is equals to pi minus cos inverse x sec inverse of minus x is pi minus sec inverse x cot inverse of minus x is pi minus cot inverse x now the last in the last box you can see three identities one of which i have proved for you and the rest two you have to prove yourself sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is equals to pi by 2 tan inverse x plus cot inverse x is equals to pi by 2 cosec inverse x plus sec inverse x is equals to pi by 2 remember on the basis of this fourth box we have a very important question which is asked many times in the exams we know the value of cot pi by 2 cot pi by 2 is cot 90 degrees which is equals to 0 they will give me a question cot then inside the bracket they will write sin inverse x plus cos inverse x and they will ask you to find its value try to listen to me once again cot inside the bracket they will write sin inverse x plus cot inverse x and they will ask you to find its value so sin inverse x at plus cos inverse x it will become pi by 2 and cot pi by 2 it is equals to 0 so these types of questions are very important from the exam point of view these are the results that we have proved 10 inverse x plus 10 inverse y is equals to 10 inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy this condition I told you xy must be less than 1 then we have 10 inverse x minus 10 inverse y it is equals to 10 inverse x minus y upon 1 plus xy then we have proved 2 10 inverse x is equals to sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square then we have 2 10 inverse x is equals to cos inverse 1 minus x square upon 1 plus x square and the last result is 2 10 inverse x is equals to 10 inverse 2x upon 1 minus x square so students the result number 4 and 5 I have left for you I am just giving you the hint and you can uh, try to simplify it yourself just see the right hand side of part 4 it has cos inverse 1 minus x square upon 1 plus x square so try to think over the result cos inverse cos theta it will be theta that means inside this bracket I have to make a formula of cos now for cos 2 theta I have a result cos 2 theta is equals to 1 minus 10 square theta upon 1 plus 10 square theta so I hope you can understand now that in place of x I have to substitute 10 theta and in the same way for result number 5 we have to use the identity 10 2 theta it is equals to 2 10 theta upon 1 minus 10 square theta so this is the end of all the results of inverse trigonometric functions I have compiled all the formulas for you and most of the formulas we have derived also now with the help of this video you try to simplify as many questions as you can from the second exercise as well as from the miscellaneous one still two things are still left uh, to be covered in this topic that I'll be completing in the next video so all the best try to go through these results at least two three times 
so that you can have perfection and in the next video when I'll be discussing some important questions with you at that time you should not find difficulty in writing the formulas of this particular chapter. Thank you.